All right, thank you again for all of your questions. I really appreciate them. And uh, hopefully I'm all caught up up to this video. If I missed your question at this point, uh, you'll have to leave it down again in the comments below. All right, first question here is from Lauren. It says, uh, just have a question regarding autofocusing on people when they are moving like walking towards you. Does face detect do continuous focusing while it's on or do you need to focus uh, using the shutter half press or back button? Or is there a better way to do it just like set the target with the CAF? Thanks again. All right, so the short answer is yeah, you have to half press the shutter button and or use the AF on button on the back of the camera if it's assigned for autofocus. But uh, there's a couple other recommendations I wanna make uh, that might help you out. So let's uh, go into the camera. All right, let's go into the menu and go to the autofocus menu. And for AF mode, I like to use continuous autofocus for moving targets, not continuous autofocus with tracking. And then of course, um, I don't like to use manual focus, so I leave this off, but that's uh, up to you. And then here, AF by half pressing the shutter button, and you can separate between uh, single AF or continuous AF. Uh, so all that means is uh, when you have it set to yes, so when you half press the shutter button, it's going to try and autofocus. Uh, versus, let's say I turn this off and turn this off, now when I have pressed the shutter button, it's not gonna do anything. So I have to fully press the shutter button is my only option to take a picture. Uh, but it's not going to focus when I use the shutter button. And uh, you know, so you can leave this on or off, but I like to leave these on. Just I have muscle memory now for half pressing. Now AF on and MF mode, I just leave this on to yes, uh, even though I don't normally manually focus. And then release priority, this is important. Right? You want to make sure that these are both turned off. So what this does is it forces the camera to only take a picture when it thinks it has focus. Otherwise, when you fully press the shutter button, it's going to take a picture whether it has focus or not. So sometimes in sports action photography, people like to turn these on uh, because they rather the camera just fire off as many uh, pictures as possible. But for what you're doing, I think it's better if you have these turned off. So it's only going to take a picture when the camera thinks it has focus. Let's go to the next page. And uh, illuminator on, that's optional. AF area pointer, that's something else. Okay, so face detection on. You can choose uh, eye detection, left eye, right eye if you want, but face detection on. And then face and eye AF button. Okay, so you can actually assign face detect to be half press the shutter button or AF on or both. Uh, so let's go into this menu. So right now I have half pressing the shutter button set to uh, give face detect priority. And I have the AF on button to give the target point priority. Uh, so let me show you how that works the way this is set. All right, you'll notice that I have my AF target mode here to a small point and it's on the bird. But you also see a box around my face. So if I half press the shutter button, it's gonna focus on the target point. But if I push the AF on button, it's gonna focus on my face. And you'll see a little green box fill in just momentarily when I push that to confirm it lock focus. So when I half press the shutter button, the face detect uh, box goes away and I'm, I'm targeting on the bird or wherever my target point is. And if I half press the, or push the AF on button, it's going to focus on my face. So it doesn't matter where the target box is uh, in the frame, even if I have this on full frame, uh, if I push the AF on button, it's always gonna focus on the face it finds. And if I have pressed the shutter button, in this case, it's gonna focus on the first thing it finds and it's finding the bird first before it finds me. But uh, so that's how that works. So just to keep in mind this setting, you know, you may want to put them both onto face priority, so it doesn't matter if you half press the shutter button or push the AF on button, or you can uh, reverse what I just showed. All right, moving on, uh, subject detection off. That's for like birds and planes and stuff, so make sure that's off. Eye detection frame on. Uh, CAF sensitivity, I like to have set to plus two, so that way the autofocusing system will change focus planes as quickly as possible because people are gonna be walking towards you or away from you. You want the camera to keep up, basically that's what that does. And uh, center priority, I just have all these checked. And limiter off, scanner on, and adjustment off. 
This is for movie mode, we can ignore these. And then these are just customizing your target points. Uh, you can probably ignore, just use whatever default uh, settings are here. And then on the last page, again, probably nothing to do here. Uh, personally, I like to turn the, the manual focus clutch off. So uh, that's basically, if your lens has one of these, it deactivates this so it doesn't force your camera into manual focus mode. Uh, so I like to make sure this is inoperative because I can't tell you how many times uh, when I was starting out with this lens that, you know, I'd come back, all my fo pictures are out of focus because I had this engaged. So making it inoperative will, uh, you know, negate that issue. And that's it. I know that was a really long answer, but I thought it was important to show all the different uh, settings that could be affecting the behavior of the autofocusing system uh, and the buttons. But the two key takeaways are is use CAF, and two, it doesn't matter where your AF target point is, if you have face detect on, generally the camera's always gonna focus on the person's face. All right, this next question is from uh, Off Trail Dog, and uh, it says, with the OM1 and 1240 Pro 2 when shooting high res, both handheld and on tripod, the resulting 50 meg and 80 meg ORF is not as sharp as the normal 20 meg ORF or RAW file. Uh, I've replicated this shooting all three modes on a tripod on a calm day. Is this a result of the pixel shift image needing a lot of sharpening during post, or is there a potential issue with my camera since the post-processing requirement never seems to be discussed? All right, so the short answer is yes, you do need to post-process your uh, high-res images, and, and really with any image, to get the best out of them. And a lot of times when you are looking at these images side by side, your 20 megapixel and your 80 megapixel, uh, a lot of times the 20 megapixel will actually look sharper and that's because of the uh, display output that we're looking at them. Normally, we're either looking on our laptop screen or on our monitor. It could be a 27-inch. Uh, you know, I have a 32-inch here. And even then, sometimes my 20-megapixel image does look sharper than my 80-megapixel. But it's really when you have to display very large or crop in very tight, that's when you can see a pretty big difference. So... Uh, let me show you a couple of images, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's look at this image first, and as you can see here, this is the uh, regular 20 megapixel image, and then over here we have the 80 megapixel high-res shot. Uh, I was using my 25 millimeter f1.8, and I was shooting at f5.6, and otherwise the exposure is exactly the same. So when we zoom in here, let's zoom in to 200% on the regular 20 megapixel image here. Just looking at these side by side, right away, you know, the 20 megapixel image looks sharper than the 80 megapixel image. Uh, and, you know, no question there. Hopefully you can see this on YouTube or wherever you're watching this. All right, now let's look at an edited version. And I'll go back to the same place here. I'm using this uh, little bush here as a reference. Uh, but at 200%, you can see the 20 megapixel image is now looking a little bit pixelated, uh, and it's hard to bring out any detail without starting to make it look a little crunchy. If you look at the one on the right, the high-res shot, now we can see much better tonality and a lot more details everywhere we look. And it's when we can punch in, let's say we're at 500%. Uh, Look at this rock compared to this rock, how much more detail we can see in this rock. I also printed the images with a slight crop on them, and in this case, the 20 megapixel image looks sharper than the high res image at this size. However, I did a crop of the image and printed them out side by side here, and each one represents if I had printed this image on a six foot piece of paper, uh, in which case, the high res image looks so much better. You can see a lot of detail. It's very clean versus the 20 megapixel image is very, very pixelated and really a lot of the detail is just lost. All right, let's take a quick look at another image. Uh, basically, we're seeing the same result where zoomed out, I mean, the 20 megapixel image looks sharper, but when you punch in, this is where you can see the difference on the high res side. And then one last one for good measure. And I'm gonna punch in here to this structure, but you should be able to see there's a huge difference in the amount of detail you get uh, over the 20 megapixel image, like in the stairs and the trees. 
And then I also noticed over here on the air conditioning unit, if we just zoom in just a little bit more, you can see that, you know, how much more detail you get here with a little bit of rust coming down, the stickers or decals here on the air conditioning unit. Uh, there's just no comparison. Now I put a link down below to these images so you can download them for your own personal use. Uh, of course, you can't share them as your own or resell them. I retain all rights. But that said, I figured that's the best way for you to be able to compare what I'm showing you here today on your own computer and your own photo editing software. And hopefully you can get the same result, if not better than I did. All right, and that's all I have time for today. And if you like these videos and want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or make a small donation in the links below because they help me to continue making videos like this and they're greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.